There are a minimum of 332 Old Testament prophecies regarding the person of the Messiah, and Jesus fulfilled these prophecies completely. The chance factor for Jesus fulfilling just eight of these prophecies is astronomical. Just these eight, the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem, in Micah 5.2. A messenger will prepare the way for Messiah, who is John the Baptist, and in Malachi 3.1. The, mess, the Messiah will enter Jerusalem as a king, but riding on a donkey, Zechariah 9.9. The Messiah will be betrayed by a friend and suffer wounds in his hands, Zechariah 13.6. The Messiah will be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver, Zechariah 11.12. The betrayal money will be used to purchase a potter's field, Zechariah 11.13. The Messiah will remain silent when he is afflicted, Isaiah 53.7. And the Messiah will die by having his hands and feet pierced, Psalm 22:16. All these things were prophesied hundreds of years before Jesus was ever born. And Jesus, when he came, the date of his birth became the center of all time. Now it's 2014, in reference to what? The birth of our Savior. The birth of Jesus Christ. Knowing this first, it says in verse 20 that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man. It wasn't made up of men. They weren't stories that man concocted. But holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. All true revelation, all true prophecy comes only from the Holy Spirit. All true divine healing comes only by way of the Holy Spirit. All the gifts of the Spirit come from the Holy Spirit. And anyone who tries to do anything apart from that is a actor or someone who has been self-deceived into thinking that they somehow have, have power that can be exercised without the anointing of the Holy Spirit, without the, the purpose, divine purposes of God. That's why we have to stay so clear, saints, because the time is, is coming when you're going to see two things in the body of Christ, in the church. You're going to see a lot of people just becoming very secular and very carnal, but they're still going to raise their hands and sing all the songs with fervency, but then all during the rest of the week, they're going to be fornicating and stealing and lying and doing everything else that the world does. And then you're going to see other people that become very hyper-spiritual, and they're going to, going to manifest even some signs and wonders, but it will not be from God. We have to stay in a very narrow place, but that's, that's what our path is, a very narrow and straight pathway. And the way that we are guided is through the illumination of the Word of God, to test everything to the Word of God, and to come to know God personally, not only through His Word, by, but by experiencing the presence of the Holy Spirit as we worship him in spirit and truth. That's why we, we give a lot of time to our worship in this church, because we want you to know what the spirit feels like and what, it, what the experience is when you're in the presence of the Almighty God. And that way, you will not mix up. You won't, you'll know the difference between spiritual, I mean, emotional hype or soulish hype and the peaceful, powerful, perfect presence of God through the Holy Spirit.